Hey guys, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny homes and unique spaces. Our last episode featured one couple's off-grid A-frame cabin which they built for $2,500 and this week we're featuring that same couple who have now built a micro cabin on wheels for just $1,800. Both of these episodes are great examples for what you can do with a teeny tiny amount of space and a micro budget to go with it. If you like these kind of videos, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new tour. But right now, let's check back in with this couple and take a tour of their micro cabin on wheels. Hi, I'm Jack. And I'm Riley. And we built two tiny cabins here in Minnesota. Welcome to our travel cabin. This is an ultra tiny house, only 32 square feet. the last decade of my life, I've been on constant adventures, traveling all over the country and the world, going to national parks. And when I moved here from California, I was worried about leaving the mountains and the desert behind. And how was I gonna get that nature fix? We knew we needed a space on wheels that we could take with us. The travel cabin was born out of a love of our tiny A-frame cabin here and wanting to be able to take a space like that with us wherever we go but we also wanted to do that on a friendly budget. I would call our travel cabin a micro tiny house. I built the travel cabin on a four by eight trailer. That's only 32 square feet. And the reason I did that was because I drive a Subaru Outback. So I definitely wasn't gonna be able to tow like a larger tiny house. I had to kind of stick within the 2000 pound weight limit so it only took me six days of work to construct the shell of the travel cabin. After that, the interior has been a journey of adding things, subtracting things that has been going on for the last five months. It is at where it's at now after months of trial and error. I was able to put together that cabin for around $1,800. So the travel cabin here is built on a four by eight utility trailer frame. I wanted it to be able to be towed behind our Subaru Outback. And you knew I'd fit in there. Right? Exactly, she's tiny, so she fits <laughs> perfectly. <laughs> Me, not, I'm not so tiny and I fit great too. <laughs> When I built the cabin here, I did so with a shed roof. And the reason for that is I wanted uh, the airflow to be able to go up and over the roof while we traveled down the highway. A lot of people have told me that this thing looks like an outhouse and <laughs> I had no intention of making it look like that. But you know, it is what it is. <laughs> it is kind of an outhouse because we take it out and uh, it's our house. I definitely wanted to have a door that had some windows on it and I found this door for free. And so that was great. I just got it, put it together, painted it green and that was that. Now I did a few modifications to it. I just added um, this little carabiner on a piece of rope and put this little bracket on here so that when we're driving down the highway, I can have it like that, and that way, if it does somehow open, it's not gonna just fly out and fly off of the cabin. I picked the color scheme as an homage to our family cabin that is up north in Minnesota. It's been there since 1936. The colors up there are green with this nice dark stain. And then we also have a little touch right here, which I love, and my mother-in-law and his mom got it for us as a gift. We go to all these different places, but we always have our home with us. So if you come over to the side here, this is where we have our outdoor shower. And I'll show you exactly how that works. It's just a good old fashioned bucket. 
and a rechargeable shower pump that we attach to the side of the cabin here. Take the shower head and it mounts right up here. And then this pump will turn on and you put it into your bucket full of water. The water comes out of the shower head. It's really, really nice and simple and that's what we wanted because we're not using this for everyday use. Now, a lot of people have these great tankless propane camp water heaters nowadays, but I have not gotten one yet. And that's because I have this immersion rod and this thing will heat up the water super hot. The only catch is, is I have to plug it into a power inverter in my car to do so. Uh, but it does give us hot water and someday we'll upgrade to the propane system. For the shower, I just built this little platform because I've taken enough outdoor showers where I was standing on gravel or dirt and your feet just get all muddy. And so it's super nice to be able to stand on the platform. So now let's talk about our windows. We got both of these windows. There's also one identical on the other side. We got them on Facebook Marketplace. It allows a lot of airflow into the cabin space and it also makes the cabin feel a lot bigger than it is. So when I first built the trailer, I had the axle that came with it and it was super rusty and I could tell it wouldn't support much weight. So I had a custom 3,500 pound axle made for this trailer. And what was great about it is it made it so I could put these bigger tires on. They hold a lot more weight and they're just more steady. But also what this did was I was able to extend the axle out to make it a five foot axle. So having the five foot axle and the bigger tires, it made it much safer to tow. And uh, I really, really love it. All right, so let's take a look at the back here. Uh, the first thing is this container, which houses our diesel heater. This thing pumps really clean, dry heat into the cabin. Now, it is a portable diesel heater, so we can use this thing either here or down at our other cabin. So this thing is really, really great, and it keeps us toasty warm on days like today. This is my favorite touch of the entire cabin. It is our octagon window. Um, it kind of reminds me of a window that you would see on an old ship. I love the look of it and it just makes for a beautiful view, especially when you first wake up in the morning and get to have your coffee and stare out. And one little detail that I want to touch on is this flashing that I put on the corners of the cabin here. I did this to add a little bit of extra aerodynamics and it, it may seem like nothing, but believe it or not, having this rounded really does help a little bit with airflow when you're moving down the road. And I also think it looks kind of cool too. Everyone wants to know what the bathroom situation is and this is it. It's a good old fashioned bucket with a toilet seat, nothing, nothing fancy. Yeah, nothing <laughs> yeah. fancy. Now, um, because this is our travel trailer, we're not using it full time, and so this works just fine. What you do is you put a bag in here, you wrap it around the toilet, you do your business, and you take it out, and you can dispose of it. So that is that. And then down below here, we have these RV jacks. We have four of them just to make sure we can level out the travel cabin as well as just make it more stable when we park it. And those things are super, super nice. Let's show you the inside of the tiny cabin. It's not a lot of space, but I think we've done a pretty good job of setting this up to utilize everything that we possibly can. We have definitely had a lot of trial and error when it comes to the travel cabin. It probably took us a good three months to finally get it all locked in and how we can both travel comfortably together. What we've got here are our two couches. We've got one on the back here and we've got one on the side. What's great about these is it gives us a bunch of different seating options. You can either sit in the back like this, or what I really love is you can crawl into the back and put your feet up and really have like a nice little reading nook. 
I am able to sit very comfortably just like this. I could also lay long ways if I wanted. So while she's able to do that, I'm able to sit on this couch and relax as well. And it was important for us to have places for each of us to be able to put our feet up and just really be able to uh, sink into the couch and not have to be crammed together. And so having the couch back here, as well as the side couch, has really been a great way for us to uh, relax. And then of course, our dog has her bed down below here and she sleeps down there. And so it's perfect. We each have our own little spot inside the cabin. So like in most tiny spaces, you've got to have multiple purposes for different elements in your space. And our couch here needed to also come together to form the bed. And so each one of these cushions will eventually be put together and the bed extends out to right about here. So this is how we turn our couch into our bed. First, we take our cushion that we have here as a backrest, move it onto the back couch. We take this cushion off as well. And then as you'll see down here, these boards are the slats that form the foundation of the couch. Well, they also come out and they will become the slats for our bed as well. Place them sideways. As you'll see, we have supports on either side. And then we take one last slat here and we place it up here on this beam and then it stems over to the cooler. So like I said, multiple purposes. It's really, really great. And then we're able to grab our last cushion, place it down there and it becomes a twin sized bed. As you can see, one person fits really, really well in here. Now with two, it definitely gets a little tighter. I love that you made both of our sleeping areas have arm room. So yes. even though it, it may look a little crammed, we're both side sleepers. So it works perfectly. Now, we also knew that we were gonna need storage for clothes and other knickknacks while we're in bed and I wanted to find a system that would be lightweight. And so I found these net baskets that you just screw right onto the walls and it allows you to put your clothes in there or maybe your phone or other things. And so we've got them on either side of the cabin as well. I've got mine over here. Over here, we've got our carbon monoxide detector and our remote control for the diesel heater. So we're actually able to turn up or down or turn off the heater right here inside the cabin and it is just so nice. The major design element in here is that we have hung so many photos from our previous adventures and we're just going to keep adding them on. Up at our family cabin, there's just always been this photo wall and it just shows all the adventures that have been had up at the cabin. And so I thought in here we would do the same thing, just showing all of the amazing memories that we've made outside, either at this cabin, other cabins, or just around the world. It's just so cool to be able to relive those memories. So this is our table area. It pulls up like this. And what you do is we have two pieces of wood right here. And underneath here, you simply slide this underneath, holds it up like that. Make sure it's kind of more in the middle area so that way it's not lopsided. You take the other slot right here. And same deal. You just kind of want to put it under evenly and voila, you have your table. It's super nice for eating dinner. We can both sit there. Also, you can do some work there, journal, draw the play beautiful view. Cards. Yeah, play cards, anything you want. That thing is crucial. Now in the back, I had one other thing that I really wanted to make sure we had space for, and that's what I call the garage. 
So behind this cushion here, I have all of the little toys and tools that we need while out in the woods. So we've got a hatchet, we've got a shovel, we have our portable solar panels, we've got chairs, we've got a hammock, we've got a little saw, and of course, we've got my little guitar here. And as far as the electric goes in here, we just use a solar generator. It's a portable one. And so we're able to either recharge that at home, in the car, or we can use our portable solar panels. And for now, that seems to really work well for us. When we go out, we usually get like three days off of one charge. And uh, even during the day, sometimes we'll put the panels out and top it off. But um, it, it seems to do the trick. And so we are satisfied with that. As you can see, we have cafe string lights hanging all around the cabin. I made sure to put two sets of fans in here, one near the kitchen and then one set back here by the bed so that we always have good airflow in here, especially in the summertime. Our kitchenette is pretty basic. We just have a single burner stove, but we have all of the tools that we need. We've got our coffee cups hanging up. We've got cooking tools here on a hook. We've got this pantry up here that has our coffee pot and breakfast things and other snacks. Uh, we have our water cups up here. And then up above, we've got plates, bowls, lids, cutting board, and our pots and pans, as well as a paper towel roll. All of this stuff is designed to travel like this for the most part. And it's really, really great because the plates don't fall. And even if they do, they're made out of aluminum. And so they do not break. Down below, we've got our waste basket here. And a little adjustment that I made to it is I have a little hook here that allows it to come down on a hinge so that when you take the garbage out, it's much easier than trying to fit it between the countertop here. Of course, we've got the propane for our camp stove. And then another essential bit, we've got toilet paper sitting here. And that is for Riley when she uses the bathroom in the middle of the night. The bathroom will sit right here and then she's got access to toilet paper and a wastebasket and hand sanitizer all right in one space. We just use a cooler. Um, it's secured with these hooks here as well. And as of now, this does really well for us. Maybe someday in the future we'll get a refrigerator, but for now a cooler works just fine. On the other side of the kitchen, we've got more counter space, pantry space. We have our water jug, which when we fill it up, it just sits here and you can fill up your water. Uh, as you can see, nothing fancy here, just a good old fashioned elastic cord to keep that thing from falling off. Up above, we've got even more pantry space. And then of course, up top, the real essentials, we've got our toilet paper. Now, whenever you're in a home, you need extra supplies. And so we created this closet and all it is, is a curtain. It's not the prettiest curtain, but it's a curtain. And behind it, we keep all of the things that uh, we need, but don't need to be out for everyone to see. We love the creativity of being able to design our space and then see it come to life out on the road. We use it to really get out and just enjoy this life that we've been given. So we have a baby girl on the way. Our family is growing. And I think this travel cabin is going to be a little too small for the three of us. And yeah. so I think sometime down the line here, we're going to have to build one just a little bit bigger, little bigger. to fit the entire family. So there's going to be a new cabin coming somewhat soon. Yeah. Thanks for watching this week's video. If you'd like to see our other video featuring this couple's A-frame cabin, make sure that you check out the link in the description, and I will see you soon with another tiny or unique home tour.